Enactivism argues that cognition arises through a dynamic interaction between an acting organism and its environment. It claims that our environment is one which we selectively create through our capacities to interact with the world. Organisms do not passively receive information from their environments, which they then translate into internal representations. Natural cognitive systems participate in the generation of meaning. Engaging in transformational and not merely informational interactions, they enact a world." These authors suggest that the increasing emphasis upon inactive terminology presages a new era in thinking about cognitive science. How the actions involved in inactivism relate to age-old questions about free will remains a topic of active debate. The term inactivism is close in meaning to inaction, defined as the manner in which a subject of perception creatively matches its actions to the requirements of its situation. The introduction of the term inaction in this context is attributed to Francisco Varela, Evan Thompson, and Eleanor Roche, who proposed the name to emphasize the growing conviction that cognition is not the representation of a pre-given world by a pre-given mind but is rather the enactment of a world and a mind on the basis of a history of the variety of actions that a being in the world performs." This was further developed by Thompson and others, to place emphasis upon the idea that experience of the world is a result of mutual interaction between the sensorimotor capacities of the organism and its environment. The initial emphasis of inactivism upon sensorimotor skills has been criticized as cognitively marginal, but it has been extended to apply to higher level cognitive activities, such as social interactions. In the inactive view, Knowledge is constructed, it is constructed by an agent through its sensorimotor interactions with its environment, co-constructed between and within living species through their meaningful interaction with each other. In its most abstract form, knowledge is co-constructed between human individuals in sociolinguistic interactions. Science is a particular form of social knowledge construction that allows us to perceive and predict events beyond our immediate cognitive grasp and also to construct further, even more powerful scientific knowledge." Inactivism is closely related to situated cognition and embodied cognition, and is presented as an alternative to cognitivism, computationalism, and Cartesian dualism. Philosophical <laughs> aspects <laughs> 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 Inactivism is one of a cluster of related theories sometimes known as the 4S. As described by Mark Rollins, mental processes are embodied involving more than the brain, including a more general involvement of bodily structures and processes. Embedded functioning only in a related external environment. Enacted involving not only neural processes, but also things an organism does. Extended into the organism's environment, inactivism proposes an alternative to dualism as a philosophy of mind, in that it emphasizes the interactions between mind, body and the environment, seeing them all as inseparably intertwined in mental processes. The self arises as part of the process of an embodied entity interacting with the environment in precise ways determined by its physiology. In this sense, individuals can be seen to grow into or arise from their interactive role with the world. An action is the idea that organisms create their own experience through their actions. Organisms are not passive receivers of input from the environment, but are actors in the environment such that what they experience is shaped by how they act. In the tree of knowledge Maturana and Varela proposed the term inactive to evoke the view of knowledge that what is known is brought forth, in contraposition to the more classical views of either cognitivism or connectionism. They see inactivism as providing a middle ground between the two extremes of representationalism and solipsism. They seek to confront the problem of understanding how our existence the praxis of our living is coupled to a surrounding world which appears filled with regularities that are at every instant the result of our biological and social histories, to find a via media, to understand the regularity of the world we are experiencing at every moment, but without any point of reference independent of ourselves that would give certainty to our descriptions and cognitive assertions. 
Indeed the whole mechanism of generating ourselves, as describers and observers tells us that our world, as the world which we bring forth in our coexistence with others, will always have precisely that mixture of regularity and mutability, that combination of solidity and shifting sand, so typical of human experience when we look at it up close. Tree of Knowledge, p. 241 An activism also addresses the hard problem of consciousness, referred to by Thompson as part of the explanatory gap in explaining how consciousness and subjective experience are related to brain and body. The problem with the dualistic concepts of consciousness and life in standard formulations of the hard problem is that they exclude each other by construction. Instead, according to Thompson's view of inactivism, the study of consciousness or phenomenology as exemplified by Husserl and Merleau-Ponty is to complement science and its objectification of the world. The whole universe of science is built upon the world as directly experienced, and if we want to subject science itself to rigorous scrutiny and arrive at a precise assessment of its meaning and scope, we must begin by reawakening the basic experience of the world of which science is the second-order expression Merleau-Ponty, the phenomenology of perception as quoted by Thompson, p. 165. In this interpretation, inactivism asserts that science is formed or enacted as part of humankind's interactivity with its world, and by embracing phenomenology, science itself is properly situated in relation to the rest of human life and is thereby secured on a sounder footing. Inaction has been seen as a move to conjoin representationalism with phenomenalism, that is, as adopting a constructivist epistemology, an epistemology centered upon the active participation of the subject in constructing reality. However, constructivism focuses upon more than a simple interactivity that could be described as a minor adjustment to assimilate reality or accommodate to it. Constructivism looks upon interactivity as a radical, creative, revisionist process in which the knower constructs a personal knowledge system based upon their experience and tested by its viability in practical encounters with their environment. Learning is a result of perceived anomalies that produce dissatisfaction with existing conceptions. How does constructivism relate to inactivism? From the above remarks, it can be seen that Glazer's Feld expresses an interactivity between the knower and the known quite acceptable to an inactivist, but does not emphasize the structured probing of the environment by the knower that leads to the perturbation relative to some expected result that then leads to a new understanding. It is this probing activity, especially where it is not accidental but deliberate, that characterizes inaction, and invokes effect, that is, the motivation and planning that lead to doing and to fashioning the probing, both observing and modifying the environment, so that perceptions and nature condition one another through generating one another. The questioning nature of this probing activity is not an emphasis of Piaget and Glazersfeld. Sharing inactivism's stress upon both action and embodiment in the incorporation of knowledge, but giving Glazersfeld's mechanism of viability and evolutionary emphasis, is evolutionary epistemology. Inasmuch as an organism must reflect its environment well enough for the organism to be able to survive in it, and to be competitive enough to be able to reproduce at sustainable rate, the structure and reflexes of the organism itself embody knowledge of its environment. This biology-inspired theory of the growth of knowledge is closely tied to universal Darwinism, and is associated with evolutionary epistemologists such as Karl Popper, Donald T. Campbell, Peter Munns, and Gary C. Zico. According to Munns, an organism is an embodied theory about its environment. Embodied theories are also no longer expressed in language, but in anatomical structures or reflex responses, etc. Topic psychological aspects McGann and others argue that inactivism attempts to mediate between the explanatory role of the coupling between cognitive agent and environment and the traditional emphasis on brain mechanisms found in neuroscience and psychology. In the interactive approach to social cognition developed by de Jaeger and others, the dynamics of interactive processes are seen to play significant roles in coordinating interpersonal understanding, processes that in part include what they call participatory sensemaking. Recent developments of inactivism in the area of social neuroscience involve the proposal of the interactive brain hypothesis where social cognition brain mechanisms, even those used in non-interactive situations, are proposed to have interactive origins. Topic inactive views of perception In the inactive view, perception is not conceived as the transmission of information but more as an exploration of the world by various means. Cognition is not tied into the workings of an inner mind, some cognitive core, but occurs in directed interaction between the body and the world it inhabits. Alva Noe in advocating an inactive view of perception sought to resolve how we perceive three-dimensional objects, on the basis of two-dimensional input. 
He argues that we perceive this solidity or volumetricity by appealing to patterns of sensorimotor expectations. These arise from our agent active movements and interaction with objects, or object active changes in the object itself. The solidity is perceived through our expectations and skills in knowing how the object's appearance would change with changes in how we relate to it. He saw all perception as an active exploration of the world, rather than being a passive process, something which happens to us. No's idea of the role of expectations in three-dimensional perception has been opposed by several philosophers, notably by Andy Clark. Clark points to difficulties of the inactive approach. He points to internal processing of visual signals, for example, in the ventral and dorsal pathways, the two streams hypothesis. This results in an integrated perception of objects their recognition and location, respectively, yet this processing cannot be described as an action or actions. In a more general criticism, Clark suggests that perception is not a matter of expectations about sensorimotor mechanisms guiding perception. Rather, although the limitations of sensorimotor mechanisms constrain perception, this sensorimotor activity is drastically filtered to fit current needs and purposes of the organism, and it is these imposed expectations that govern perception, filtering for the relevant details of sensorimotor input called sensorimotor summarizing. These sensorimotor-centered and purpose-centered views appear to agree on the general scheme but disagree on the dominance issue, is the dominant component peripheral or central. Another view, the closed-loop perception one, assigns equal a priori dominance to the peripheral and central components. In closed-loop perception, perception emerges through the process of inclusion of an item in a motor-sensory motor loop, i.e., a loop or loops connecting the peripheral and central components that are relevant to that item. The item can be a body part in which case the loops are in steady state or an external object in which case the loops are perturbed and gradually converge to a steady state. These inactive loops are always active, switching dominance by the need. Another application of inaction to perception is analysis of the human hand. The many remarkably demanding uses of the hand are not learned by instruction, but through a history of engagements that lead to the acquisition of skills. According to one interpretation, it is suggested that the hand is less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 an organ of cognition, not a faithful subordinate working under top down instruction, but a partner in a bi directional interplay between manual and brain activity. According to Daniel Hutto, Inactivists are concerned to defend the view that our most elementary ways of engaging with the world and others, including our basic forms of perception and perceptual experience, are mindful in the sense of being phenomenally charged and intentionally directed, despite being non-representational and content-free." Hudo calls this position rec radical inactive cognition. According to REC, there is no way to distinguish neural activity that is imagined to be genuinely content-involving and thus truly mental, truly cognitive from other non-neural activity that merely plays a supporting or enabling role in making mind and cognition possible. Topic: <laughs> Participatory sense making. Hannah de Jaeger and Ezekiel de Paolo 2007 have extended the inactive concept of sense-making into the social domain. The idea takes as its departure point the process of interaction between individuals in a social encounter. De Jaeger and de Paolo argue that the interaction process itself can take on a form of autonomy operationally defined. This allows them to define social cognition as the generation of meaning and its transformation through interacting individuals. The notion of participatory sense-making has led to the proposal that interaction processes can sometimes play constitutive roles in social cognition de Jaeger, de Paolo, Gallagher, 2010. It has been applied to research in social neuroscience and autism. In a similar vein, an inter-inactive approach to agency holds that the behavior of agents in a social situation unfolds not only according to their individual abilities and goals, but also according to the conditions and constraints imposed by the autonomous dynamics of the interaction process itself." According to Torrance, inactivism involves five interlocking themes related to the question, what is it to be a cognizing, conscious agent? It is 1. To be a biologically autonomous autopoetic organism 2. To generate significance or meaning, rather than to act via 
Updated internal representations of the external world 3. To engage in sense-making via dynamic coupling with the environment 4. To enact or bring forth a world of significances by mutual co-determination of the organism with its enacted world 5. To arrive at an experiential awareness via lived embodiment in the world, Torrance adds that Many kinds of agency, in particular the agency of human beings, cannot be understood separately from understanding the nature of the interaction that occurs between agents. That view introduces the social applications of inactivism. Social cognition is regarded as the result of a special form of action, namely social interaction. The inactive approach looks at the circular dynamic within a dyad of embodied agents. In cultural psychology, inactivism is seen as a way to uncover cultural influences upon feeling, thinking and acting. Bearvelt and Verhegen argue that, "...it appears that seemingly natural experience is thoroughly intertwined with socio-cultural realities." They suggest that the social patterning of experience is to be understood through inactivism. The idea that the reality we have in common, and in which we find ourselves, is neither a world that exists independently from us, nor a socially shared way of representing such a pregiven world, but a world itself brought forth by our ways of communicating and our joint action. The world we inhabit is manufactured of meaning rather than information. Luhmann attempted to apply Maturana and Varela's notion of autopoiesis to social systems. Quote, a core concept of social systems theory is derived from biological systems theory, the concept of autopoiesis. Chilean biologist Humberto Maturana come up with the concept to explain how biological systems such as cells are a product of their own production. Quote, quote, systems exist by way of operational closure and this means that they each construct themselves and their own realities. Topic. Educational aspects. The first definition of inaction was introduced by psychologist Jerome Bruner, who introduced inaction as learning by doing in his discussion of how children learn, and how they can best be helped to learn. He associated inaction with two other ways of knowledge organization, iconic and symbolic. Any domain of knowledge or any problem within that domain of knowledge can be represented in three ways, by a set of actions appropriate for achieving a certain result inactive representation, by a set of summary images or graphics that stand for a concept without defining it fully iconic representation, and by a set of symbolic or logical propositions drawn from a symbolic system that is governed by rules or laws for forming and transforming propositions symbolic representation. The term inactive framework was elaborated upon by Francisco Varela and Humberto Maturana. Sriraman argues that inactivism provides a rich and powerful explanatory theory for learning and being, and that it is closely related to both the ideas of cognitive development of Piaget, and also the social constructivism of Vygotsky. Piaget focused on the child's immediate environment, and suggested cognitive structures like spatial perception emerge as a result of the child's interaction with the world. According to Piaget, children construct knowledge, using what they know in new ways and testing it, and the environment provides feedback concerning the adequacy of their construction. In a cultural context, Vygotsky suggested that the kind of cognition that can take place is not dictated by the engagement of the isolated child, but is also a function of social interaction and dialogue that is contingent upon a socio-historical context. Inactivism in educational theory looks at each learning situation as a complex system consisting of teacher, learner, and context, all of which frame and co-create the learning situation. Inactivism in education is very closely related to situated cognition, which holds that knowledge is situated, being in part a product of the activity, context, and culture in which it is developed and used. This approach challenges the separating of what is learned from how it is learned and used. Topic artificial intelligence aspects The ideas of inactivism regarding how organisms engage with their environment have interested those involved in robotics and man-machine interfaces. 
The analogy is drawn that a robot can be designed to interact and learn from its environment in a manner similar to the way an organism does that, and a human can interact with a computer-aided design tool or database using an interface that creates an inactive environment for the user, that is, all the user's tactile, auditory, and visual capabilities are enlisted in a mutually explorative engagement, capitalizing upon all the user's abilities, and not at all limited to cerebral engagement. In these areas it is common to refer to affordances as a design concept, the idea that an environment or an interface affords opportunities for an action, and good design involves optimizing the role of such affordances. The activity in the AI community also has influenced inactivism as whole. Referring extensively to modeling techniques for evolutionary robotics by Beer, the modeling of learning behavior by Kelso, and to modeling of sensorimotor activity by Saltzman, McGann, de Jaeger, and de Paolo discuss how this work makes the dynamics of coupling between an agent and its environment, the foundation of inactivism, an operational, empirically observable phenomenon, that is, the AI environment invents examples of inactivism using concrete examples that, although not as complex as living organisms, isolate and illuminate basic Basic principles. Topic see also topic references. Topic further reading. Clark, Andy, 2015. Surfing uncertainty, prediction, action, and the embodied mind. Oxford University Press. ISBN 9780190217013. De Jaeger H. D. Paolo E. A. 2007. Participatory sense making: An inactive approach to social cognition. Phenomenology and the Cognitive Sciences. 6 4, 485-507. doi, 10.1007 per seconds 1109700079076-9. D. Paolo, E. A., Rode, M. and de Jaeger, H., 2010. Horizons for the Inactive Mind, Values, Social Interaction, and Play. In J. Stewart, O. Gappin and E. A. D. Paolo, eds, an action, Towards a New Paradigm for Cognitive Science, Cambridge, Massachusetts, MIT Press, pp. 33-87. ISBN 9780262014076. Doi, 2006. Radical Inactivism, Intentionality, Phenomenology, and Narrative. In R. D. Ellis and N. Newton series eds, Consciousness and Emotion, Vol. 2. ISBN 90-272-4151-1 McGann, M. and Torrance, S. 2005. Doing It and Meaning It and the Relationship Between the Two. In R. D. Ellis and N. Newton, Consciousness and Emotion, Vol. 1, Agency, Conscious Choice, and Selective Perception. Amsterdam, John Benjamins. ISBN 1-58811-596-8 Tom Fros, Ezekiel A. De Paolo, 2011. The Inactive Approach, Theoretical Sketches from Cell to Society. Pragmatics and Cognition. 19 1-36. 10.1.1.224.5504. Doi 10.1075 per percent, 19.1.01 FRO. Steve Torrance, Tom Frost 2011. An Interinactive Approach to Agency, Participatory Sense-Making, Dynamics, and Sociality. Humana. Mente, 1521-53. Sightseer 10.1.1.187.1151. Topic Notes Topic External links Pietro Morasso Consciousness is the emergent property of the interaction between brain, body, and environment, the crucial role of haptic perception PDF. Archived from the original PDF on 8 May 2006. Slides related to a chapter on haptic perception recognition through touch, Pietro Morasso Chapter 14, The Crucial Role of Haptic Perception. In Antonio Cella, Riccardo Manzotti. Artificial Consciousness. Academic. P. 234 FF. ISBN 978-1845400705. John Stewart. Olivier Gapin, Bruno Bachamont, eds. Questioning Life and Cognition, Some Foundational Issues in the Paradigm of Inaction. Inaction Series, Online Collaborative Publishing. Inaction Series. Retrieved April 27, 2014. George Louis Barron, Eric Brulard, Christoph Dansack, January 1999. Educational Multimedia Task Force, M1045, Representation, PDF. 
an overview of the rationale and means and methods for the study of representations that the learner constructs in his, her attempt to understand knowledge in a given field. See in particular section 1.2.1.4 Towards Social Representations p. 24 Randall Whitaker 2001. Autopoiesis and Inaction. Observer Web. An extensive but uncritical introduction to the work of Francisco Varela and Humberto Maturana and activism, arguments and applications. Avant, v. 2 2014. Autumn 2014. Doi 10.12849/50202014.0109.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0